Good evening. Welcome to Marketplace in Action. I'll be your host this evening, Dr. Kim. With all of these, with me is Pastor Anthony. Hello. And today I want to talk about distractions. Let me set it up so you know what we're talking about. If you've got something handy to write with, you might want to grab something. Here's just a thought. Wealth has destroyed the godliness of more people than any other thing. Let me explain that. But you might say, but I'm not wealthy. I thought the same thing until you look at this. The world that we're around us, not here in America, but around the world, anybody that has food, clothing, a place to sleep, and just a little bit left over each day is considered wealthy. Mm -hmm. That's by definition. Now, I just want to throw this out there. The problem with wealth is not its demands that we have to manage it itself. We have to take care of what it provides. We also have to be very careful that it won't dis consume us, it distracts us, even though wealth is neutral. A lot of the Bible's heroes had great wealth, but it's hardly anybody that can manage it or use it in the proper way. This is all next, Marketplace in Action. Stay tuned. Welcome to Marketplace in Action. Giving you hope for your bowling purposes. Breaking down the word to uncover the promises that God has for your life. Building your faith to claim those promises. Welcome back. We're talking about distractions. I want to bring Pastor Anthony in. In fact, most of us have a mindset that wealth is neutral, which is a defense. Let me tell you why. Because it's been reared in our culture that we have to be wealthy. If we keep prodding us to become wealthier and wealthier, if we promote the idea that nobody is useless, in fact, we have to possess wealth, it tends to work against us, making wealth difficult for us to control, even though God might be blessing us that he doesn't prosper us too much, of course, until we're ready to manage it. Wouldn't you agree, Pastor Anthony? That is absolutely right. And... You know, everyone thinks we're already like, we're ready for the great big time. You yes. know, we, uh, I hear a lot of people, God called me to steward trillions of dollars and I'm going to, you know, do this and be in charge of this. And God wants me to preach to millions of people. I, I, I hear this a lot, you know, and that's great. Maybe God did call you to that. You know, Amen. who am I to know? Only thou knowest Lord, you know, but there's a, process to this to how the kingdom works and how God will bless people and how he does it and one of the ways is there's a principle in the Bible and it seems to be fluent in from the beginning to the end in many different forms both in heaven as above so below but the concept is what Jesus said about freely receive freely give and think about it all the references that the Bible makes about a well or about a stream or water. And what's this water doing? It's flowing. And the Bible talks about the flowing river, flowing out from up inside of us, flowing from heaven, flowing from the throne room in heaven in Revelations, you know. And this flowing water is healthy and it feeds people. The trees drink from it, the grasses, the animals drink from it. People bring, it brings life to people. But think about water when it gets stagnant, okay? It starts to fester and get uh, bacteria and just get sick. And instead of this water that's bringing life to people, instead of that, it's now just this swamp of death. And so goes with what Jesus was saying is freely give, freely receive, is if the world has a way of obtaining. It's called attain and then attain more. 
You know, it's a very worldly way it works. You know, let me get some. Okay, let me get more. Now I got two. Let me go get three. Now I got four. Now I got yours. Now you got theirs. You know, that's how the world works it. And if people are like that, they're fighting with the world's weapons because now they're going to have to build barns so that moss don't eat it. And they're going to have to polish it so the rust doesn't destroy it. That is the reward here on earth. But the kingdom principle is different. And you can see there's some billionaires, trillionaires that are heavenly, that are kingdom people. And, but there's something different about them is that when you get something, you want to give it away or give some of it away or whatever it is. That is how the kingdom works because think about it. If God just gave everything, you want to be a millionaire, boom, you're a millionaire. You would probably lose your salvation. That's it. And God doesn't want that. God wants to bless you with everything that you want, but he will not let it get in the way of your salvation. And some of us just aren't ready for that. They aren't ready for the big time. But the way to do that, and everyone thinks, oh, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I, it's not, they're not ready, but I am, I am. And then they get something and they get prideful. Then they get knocked down. See, that God doesn't want to do that. So test yourself out. See how it is with what you have. Do you hold on to it and try and keep it safe and protect it from others? Or do you freely receive Freely give. That is the way of the kingdom. That's well put. Boy, the anointing that's dropped right there. Well done, Pastor. Life takes its value from its goals and purposes. Most people's purpose in merely physical, like Pastor was saying. Yes. So the things that we pursue in life, that means that we use them to accomplish their goals, what are actually bringing everyone into bondage. The goals are carnal. The ways to reach it are also carnal. And I want to bring, speaking of physical, I'm so proud to have Pastor Gary and his wife, Dr. Kathleen, on. Pastor, you were giving me a testimony earlier about health. Can you share that with us? Okay, well, I can go back many, many, many years. When, I, as I was growing up, I tended to want to do everything my way, which uh, over the years, going on 70 years now, never really worked out. Frank Sinatra was wrong. He did it his way, but he's dead. <laughs> so um, I plan on living a lot more years. Um, I've had a number of uh, automobile accidents. The, the doctors were always amazed that I lived. You'd never live. You'd never use this arm. You'd never, you'd never be whole again. And I just shake it off. I would never just sit in my, in my, uh, in my uh, shame or my injury. But I would, I would say, no, I can go on. This is not going to stop me. And uh, four, three years ago, the fourth of this month, I had what nobody could figure out. We called it a heart attack. I was thrown to the ground, and I was thrashing around. Paramedics came, took my blood pressure. My blood pressure was sky high. They didn't think I was having a heart attack. They didn't know what it was. So they finally took me to the hospital, and the doctor is a specialist, running around, what's, he, what's wrong with this guy? He didn't have a heart attack. He kept coming mm. in. Do you have any numbness anywhere? Because they thought it was a stroke. I go, no, three or four times they came in. Nope, not, it's not a stroke. Finally, they figured out, well, one of the arteries is a little bit clogged, so we'll uh, put a stent in it, and that was it. But later on, the Lord revealed to me that I was really wrestling with a demon. Now, I don't want to get too spiritual with you, but they're real. They're real. And um, you're, we're here to defeat the, the works of the enemy. So, so it's, I had the supposed heart attack, and for about a year I just laid around, well, I'm going to die. When am I going to die? Hurry up and die. And then finally I'm just feeling bad, and I asked God, I go, why, God, did you let this happen to me? And he said, what, let you live? I go, uh oh. So I opened up my eyes and I turned around and, and I work out every day because this is God's body. And he, uh, he's going to use it for what he needs to be done. So I just give thanks to the Lord. Uh, I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor only through Christ Jesus and through the That's help powerful. of the Holy Spirit. And your thought, Dr. Kent. You know, more than that, a survivor. He goes out every single day, 6 o'clock in the morning, come. Rain or shine goes to the gym. But what is amazing about this is that 
he doesn't let it defeat him. There's been things with his blood. There's been things where he'll cut himself. And no matter what, he doesn't just say it because it's convenient. He lives it. And since the heart attack, he's healthier now than the 33 years we've been married, 35 years now. He's healthier now and more positive now than he's ever been. And he's so, um, I didn't even know he could have any more muscles. He's got muscles in his arm. And then just a few weeks ago, <laughs> just a few weeks ago, something miraculous happened because, take it away. Because, because, I don't know what you're talking about. Your voice. Oh, my voice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. So I had, so that I always, I figured I always had something to say, but my voice was raspy and soft and people couldn't hear me. I would yell and people right next to me wouldn't hear me. So I said, what? Lord, Lord, what's going on? What's with my voice? How do I fix my voice? So luckily I'm a veteran. And I've been, I've been uh, going through the, veter the VA for my physical and my, my general health and all that stuff. And I just asked the, the, the doctor one day, I go, look, my voice has been, is there any way or anything you can do to help me with my voice? He said, well, it sounds like you're an allergy. So I live in a high desert. There's, everything's dry up there. So he gave me some allergy medicine, and all I did was work as a sleeping pill. So I told him that was wrong. He said, well, look, I'll set up an appointment with an ear, nose, and throat specialist at the VA hospital. So fine, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a service injury or anything, but why not? So I went there. The, old, the first doctor checked it. He was going for the uh, allergy thing, too, and had it look in there to see if there was any scar tissue. He says, oh, it looks fine. I'll set you up with a surgeon because there's things they can do. So sure enough, I went to the surgeon. They stuck a camera down my throat, and I got to see it, or down my nose, to my throat. And he showed, he showed me where the vocal cords were far apart. And when you speak, they're supposed to come together and vibrate to let them, you know, give it, give it the tone. But since they weren't together, the air behind the words was rushing out, and I could say a, a sentence, and I'd be speaking, and all my, all my air is gone, so nobody could hear anything. So she said, well, look, I got a procedure where I inject stuff in, into, the, uh, into the vocal cords, and it will make them like new. And he did that, she did that, and there I am, I got a voice. I got a voice. Hallelujah. So the Lord's going to use me. He told me he's going to thrust me out there on my 78th birthday, which is in February. I wore a large, by the way. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm out there. I'm going to be out there. I've got a lot to say for the kingdom. Go ahead. Do you know what was so interesting about that is that um, I was away for a little bit, and he called me up. Well, first off, he said, there's something that could be done about my voice. I said, because I've only known him when he was, he had severe car accidents. So they shoved pipes and breathing tubes down his nose and voice and throat and stuff. And so I thought, there's something that can be done. So then he calls me on the phone. Now, 35 years, I know the tone of this man's voice. <laughs> and I went, what? And I heard this tone. It was kind of creepy because it was really rich and it was awesome. That wasn't Gary, you know? And I went, oh my gosh, talk again. And so now it's like, can you just say something? Can you say something? The true riches, I believe, in the kingdom is that when God does miracles, when he could have just settled, okay, this is my lot in life. Mm -hmm. And then God says, in due time, he says, I will bring you out. He's remembered that forever and ever. And here in February would be 70. No, it's his jubilee. He's like 40, 30, because the confidence that it's given him is infectious. It's so much fun. I'll just go up to him, say something. The rain in Spain falls. <laughs> and the tone, because you know, I say it wrong. So he'll go, I'll go, the rain in Spain falls gently on the plain. No, this. So the miracles of the riches of God, is it money? Boring. Is it? 
health and a miracle <coughs> and the ability to come alive when you think, oh, life has passed me by. No, these are true riches in my heart. Good word. Amen. Talk about distractions. This absolutely, the solution has always been a change of our mind by the pure word of God. Pastor, let me go to you. We learn in John 8, 32, it says, truth shall make us free. It also says Satan, a little bit later on in the verse, was a murderer and a liar, yeah. so our bondage is directly from the lies and deceits. Mm. I just want to leave with this, and I, I want to hear your thoughts. If we're involved in lying and murder, that's murder of character, stealing or coveting. Now here's my favorite, coveting somebody's ministry, other people's wives or husbands, lifestyles, whatever it is, it's a serious sin, building statues to God. Maybe it's not the truth of God, but maybe it's more self-centered, maybe comparing ourselves, breaking the Ten Commandments. It's a lot bigger than that. It's in Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2, and I'll throw it over to you, Pastor. If we'll obey His voice and obey His commands, that's how we get away from this crowd. In cool. fact, Christianity is not to cause a person to set the highest goals. It's to chase God to find the highest goals. Your thought. That's, that's absolutely right. And I want to bring it back to what, what Kathy said because that's so related, Dr. Kim, to what you were saying. And it was that God had this promise that I will bring you out of this. And sometimes our distractions can be the situations that we're in. That's it. And it, it's kind of like a catch-22 because here we are in the flesh, in the physical, but sometimes we're seeing and smelling and hearing things, but sometimes what we hear, smell, and see can be a distraction. And it could keep us from our destiny and That's what it. we're supposed to be. Thinking about all the Israelites in the desert for 40 years. They're like, oh, this is our life. So they were wanting to go back into slavery in Egypt. They were wanting to, hey, man, we should, why did we leave? We at least, like, could eat there, you know, and not this manna stuff every day. Like, you know, we worked, we had family, whatever. We forget what God has promised us when we're in our situation. That's not how we need, we need to hold on to the promises of God. Because God says, I will deliver you from this. And we have to say, God, I know that's true. It might be today. It might be tomorrow. It might be after I'm dead. And that's the thing we got to realize sometimes, that it might be when we're dead. But God, you are going to deliver me from this. And that's what I'm living for. That's what I'm setting my eyes on. I'm not looking at this stuff around because that's exactly Dr. Ken. I see so many people good-minded people who like set out with the goal to do something, they get distracted by the enemy. Coming, friends coming at them saying, oh, you're no good at that, don't do that, uh, uh, you just screwed it up anyway, you're a loser, blah, blah, blah. And you start just getting these distractions or other things or the, all the sin that you were talking about in the verses, you know, we'll go yeah, get jealous of other people. That's right and that's a distraction. Remember from last week, we, we can't be coveting the eagles flying above if we're called to be chickens. Mm -hmm. I mean, chickens lay tastier eggs than eagles, right? They actually do. They do. You know, we can be feeding people if you're a chicken, whatever. But do not be distracted by your surroundings because that is not reality. It's kind of weird because you're like, well, this is reality, but it's not. We are just here temporarily. We are spiritual beings. And sometimes we get in a mess of everything that's going on here in the physical. But God will deliver us. And so keep well, your eyes well on put. that. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to bring Dr. Kathy on this one. Now, the remember, here's where I'm going. I'm going somewhere. Bear with me. We just got a few more minutes. Two minutes or less, Dr. K. Let me just say this. The remnants of, and if you're taking notes, 2 Thessalonians 2. I want to talk, pick this up next week with the prophets that I have coming. It says, the man of sin, now watch this. God said he's going to allow delusion to come on the people, blindness to occur, a simple thing that happened to Solomon, it was self-imposed. Dr. K, I'm coming to you. What do I mean by that? Watch this. God did not make Solomon blind. It was his behavior. Help me here. Solomon simply refused to accept the proof. The problem is one dedication. What was Solomon dedicated to? He was dedicated to, in the beginning, but not very long, he was dedicated to his projects. Help me mm. here. Who am I helping right now? Buildings, 
Jerusalem, yep. his temple, his home. That's he right. had a big garden. I mean, are we talking to anybody here? The things that expanded is his overwhelming vanity. Your thought, Dr. K. And when he fell, when there were things that he had to do, um, Ambassador Rivers, he always told us, what's behind you is going to blind you. Hmm. And so it's true. He was looking, well, I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do this. And um, when God had pursued, I had gone through um, some great healings. That's it. When God had pursued. Go there. Well, there was a place where I just called him. I said, God, I need to be healed. My body hurts. My mind hurts. My this. And finally got so sick and tired of me asking the same thing. He says, look, I'm not deaf and I'm not forgetful. I know you have need of healing. And I'll tell you, I will tell you when, and I'll keep you till then. If you focus on me, then all of these things will be added. What are you creating? Years and days and days going, my foot hurts, my head hurts. What are you building? What are you focusing on? Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so, again, the true riches will come. There's money that's come. There's money that him and I are coming and have. It's because now we're not looking. We need money because we've got to buy hmm, steak instead of hamburger. Yeah. No. It's because there's things, there's a purpose for the money that went beside us and went into the focus of the true riches of God. Powerful word. Solomon ignored the laws God gave for the kings. Deuteronomy 17, 14 through 20, verse 17. He shall not greatly multiply silver and gold, mm -hmm. like Dr. K said, for himself. Look at the word, 17. It's okay to have wealth for the glory of God. But verse 20 is very interesting. It says, and his heart may not be lifted up above the brethren. Mm -hmm. Now, are we kings? Aren't we children of God, right? First Kings, kings 11, Christ. 4, Solomon clung to his wives. Now watch this. In Deuteronomy 17, didn't it talk about not wives, but one wife? I mean, are we clinging to what? Our jobs, our ministry, or a self-centered religion? Mm. Can we fully pray to a number of things? What, what is the answer to this? The patterns is insecurity. Maybe we're not always aware of it. It's like an invisible thing that we don't see. Maybe it's, we don't talk about it too much. Maybe it's like an ego system, that the systems of life, that for an example, that always doesn't, we have to manage, uh, if we're going to manage our inner world, we have to cultivate what dominates us. Here's what I propose. Think someone who feels unworthy, it's a pattern would look something like this, that I feel unworthy, therefore I'm ashamed. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to anybody? I feel ashamed, therefore I hide. When I hide, I feel discomfort or disconnected. When I disconnect it, the cycle continues. Who am I talking to? I mean, the yeah. patterns are rejected. I feel rejected. I get angry. I lash out. When I lash out, people reject me. When people reject me, I feel rejected. So the anger again, the pattern continues on and on and on. What am I saying? These patterns are not always bad, but in that case they are. But in fact, the greatest thing that we have is abundance. Jesus came to give us abundance. Mm. So if we come to change our lives by changing our thoughts, Romans 12 too. So how do we do that? We remove our mind. I'll give you five quick thoughts and I'll bring Pastor in. First, change our life, we have to change our attitude. To change our attitude, we have to change our thoughts. To change our thoughts, we have to change our belief system. To change our belief system means changing what we have attention to. Mm -hmm. And the fifth thought is change our attention to change our will. We're not governing by how we feel. We're in America where everything is feelings. I feel like this. I don't feel like that. It is your will that's going to change things. You're not master. Mm -hmm. You're not a slave to your feelings. You're a master of it. Mm -hmm. You have to tell your emotions what to do, not the other way around. Your thought, Pastor. Yeah, and that's, 
so powerful because we all can do it and we all have the power. God has given us the authority to renew our minds and to renew our spirits. But we have ultimately the, the choice. We have to do it. And don't tell me it can't be done because I've known people that all they wanted to do is one thing and probably not a good thing. I won't mention everything, but all they want to do is this and they're consumed by it. They think they'll never have a different life and now, fast forward a few years, they're living a totally different life, and they don't even want to do those things, the things that that's all that's they it. cared about at one time in their life, and now they don't even think about. That's you it. know, I have things in my life like that. I'm sure you do too. We all do. So we can do it, but you have to. The way to do it is you have to get it, your heart to desire up to those things. And at first, you might not want to. You're like, well, God, I just want to do this. You know, Paul talks about how his struggle in the New Testament struggle all the time with stuff like this. My heart wants to do this. My flesh wants to do this. Oh, what's wrong? Just do it. Start out. You're not going to want to at first, but make it a habit. What do they say? 28 days is all it takes to make a habit? Yes. Do you want to change your life? That's 28 days. You can change your entire destiny from one thing to something else. God will give you the strength, but you have to call it to God and say, God, let me do it. Let me change my life. I want to do what Greg said and die to myself. Not do it like Frank Sinatra my way. But Lord, <laughs> let this body be for you. Let me serve you. And this flesh is weak. Sometimes we don't want to. We want to give up and whatever, but we can do it. And we believe in you. God believes in you. Yes. So just cry out to God and say, yes. God, just help me overcome this and take it one second. I'll leave with this one story. Is this great evangelist, he was a rock and roll singer, got saved, and he was on an interview on a radio show, and he's like, I'm going to go, uh, I think, oh, the, uh, the host a asks him, no, he goes, do you think it's possible to go a year without sinning? And the host goes, no, that's impossible. No one can do that. He goes, well, how about a month? Think I could go a month without sinning? I don't know. You're going to sin. Okay, what about a day? You know, they narrowed it all the way down. A day, no, something you're going to sin. An hour, uh, you might think some bad thoughts. I don't know. He's like, okay, what about a minute? Do you think I can go up one minute without sinning? And the guy goes, yeah, I, I, I think you could do that. And then he goes, well, I'm going to live my life one minute at a time. Ugh. Good Sometimes word. Sometimes that's what oh, we need to do. That's good word. Let me close with this thought and we'll close. It's not our wants, whether that our will determines our future. Yes. Remember, we have the mind of Christ. Yes. Our will is his will. So mm. let me give you this thought. We are the salt of the earth and the light of the world, Matthew 5, 13, and 14. And somebody said, people learn, they forget what you have said. People forget what you have did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Mm. I'm Dr. Ken. Pastor Anthony, That's Pastor great. Gary, uh, Dr. K. We'll see you next week on Marketplace on Action. We'll pick it up, distractions. <laughs>